bully. <laughs> I grew up in Ecuador. I already had friends who I've known since kindergarten. I knew where I was meant to be, and I was happy. Then, when I was nine, I was forcibly and abruptly removed from my life. In Miami, my mother escorted me to a classroom located in a big wooden container. It was a dark and rainy day. This situation unnerved me. Also, I was confused. I did not fail fourth grade, so, so why was I forced to repeat? At the, at the door, I was taken under the control of a woman who I still remember as the paradigm of an American person. Pearly white skin, blue eyes, and silky gold hair. Her lips were painted a vibrant, a vibrant shade of red, and her clothes were a, green, were a shiny green that screamed, look at me. <coughs> she walked me to a table in the far back and explained that they have a special program for kids like me who didn't know English. I would be slowly eased in with the normal kids. The kids at the back table were obviously Latinos. The majority of the class was also of Hispanic descent, but these kids were different. They seemed to still be in their countries, um, disconnected from the class. My table was told to stand up and form a line. We were taken to a stale white room and a dictionary was thrown into each of our desks. I had the fortune of entering, F, uh, of entering school on FGAT testing day, and my scores were really bad that year. Every day, we useful students were escorted from class to a secluded spot in the library. We walked through the schoolyard, and the gringos would call us dumb, weird, and tell us to go back to our country. They taught us math and social studies in Spanish, but we weren't just treated like non-English speakers. We were treated like idiots. Our learning was dumbed down, and honestly, I don't blame the teachers. The ESOL students had developed this way of life where they had some kind of pride about being an ESOL kid. Not that there is anything wrong with being an ESOL kid, but I didn't think I was going to succeed if I didn't integrate myself into this country. They stuck together, refused to learn English and to learn at all. I knew I did not want to be a part of this group. Anytime I had the chance, I would stay in class. I did not want to be associated with the commonly hated and mocked ESOL kids. The year ended quickly. I had enrolled in March, and May was already there. I didn't learn anything, but it did help me adapt to this new culture I was suddenly exposed with. In fifth grade, the ESOL program ended, and all the Latinos were put in normal classes. At that time, I threw away the few friends I had made, something I still feel pretty guilty about today, and started trying to turn myself into someone the normal kids were like. By the end of the year, I got into a fight with a particularly annoying Cuban kid. No one liked him. The class exalted me. I was finally out of my misery. But then middle school was one of the worst things that happened to me. I befriended many different, group of, di many different groups of people, some who I personally disliked, and others who, out who outright mistreated and mocked me. Yet I just wanted to fit in somewhere. People called me the Mexican, thanks to my accent, and I took the name. In my mind, it was a sign that I finally fit into that role in this society, and I embraced it, in turn making a fool of myself. In seventh grade, I managed to become a fool out root jerk with bad, with bad things to say about you and your mother. <laughs> <coughs> At the same time, I was served out to even bigger jerks. Anyone will be friends with you if you throw away their trash, do their homework, and give them money. Eventually, I realized that some of the kids I liked being around were avoiding, because I was such, were avoiding me because I was such a jerk. I was hurting these people. I decided I didn't want to be one of these mean kids anymore. I started to avoid them. Eventually, I met the current group of people I am in through my close friend, Danny. At first, I ignored him. He was nerdy and honestly a bit annoying. <laughs> so sorry. And definitely not someone who I wanted to be around or seen with. <laughs> I only talked to him because he was the only person I knew in PE. Yet by eighth grade, I realized he was a good friend. And I stopped caring about what other people thought. Thanks to Daniel, I was able to meet my current friends. They weren't jerks or hooligans or stupid. They were fun, smart, and they liked me. It was hard for a while. They had known each other for years, and I felt like an intruder within the group. Sometimes I felt not worthy to be friends with them, because they are all great people. But they took me in, and over time, over time my worries dissolved, and I found somewhere I belonged. Then in the, in the transition to high school, fortunately almost everyone forgot what it was like from fourth to seventh grade, and I like to keep it that way.